In this tutorial, we are going to see what is an API. Then we are going to create a MVC API web client to connect some of the famous API servers to get the data. Then we are going to create our own API server. After that we are going to create a secured web API server. And finally we are going to make a CRUD application using the API. First let's see what is an API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. An application programming interface is a way for two or more computer programs to communicate with each other. It is a type of software interface, offering a service to other pieces of software. But why we need API and why APIs are so important. For example, Assume you have made a software to calculate the distance between the planets. And you took a lot of efforts to collect the data and to store it in your database. And now. I want to make a program to show the complete information. About the planets like mass, shape, and soil composition etc. But I don't have any data and idea on planets distances calculation. Since you already have the data, I requested you to provide a. REST API endpoint with a secure token. So that my program can take the planet's distance data from. Your server. And, I will be very happy to pay some nominal charges based on the usage of the data. This is the purpose of API. One software implementation can. Serve millions of software without sharing the source or implementation details. It will only expose a interface and the secured API key. Using this any software can use the service. Okay. Enough of the lecture. Let's do it practically. Start Visual Studio 2022 and click create a new project. And then select project platform as web. Then select project type as ASP.NET Core Web App using MVC platform. Give the name of the project as MVC API Client. Then set the location to C colon backslash. After that select the checkbox labeled as Place Solution and Project in the same directory. Then click the Next button. In here select the framework as .NET 6.0, Long Term Support. Then leave the authentication type. To None. After that click the Create button. And wait for scaffolding task. To complete. And then open. The Solution Explorer window. From the View menu. After that. Expand the models folder. And in here. Create a new class file. And name it as. API helper.cs. Inside this API helper class. Add a property of type string. And name the property as. API address. And then add one more property. This property is also of type string. And name this property as. API result. And then save and close the. API helper model file. Now expand the controllers folder. And then open the. HomeController.cs file. In here. Add an action method named. Create. Inside this method. Declare an object variable of type. API helper and set it to new of. API helper. Then return the view of. API helper. After that. We need to create. The view file. For this action method. Now. Right click on the create action method name and click add view. Then select razor view and click the 
Add button. Then here. Select the template as create. And then select the model class as API helper. After that, press the add button and wait for the scaffolding task to get complete. After that, open the create.cshtml and comment the input div of the API result. We don't need this here. Then open the index.cshtml file from the home folder, which is inside the views folder. In here add a p tag end. Inside this p tag, add a a tag end. Set the ASP dash action to create. Then set the CSS class to BT and then BTN dash SM and then BTN dash success. Then add ML dash one. And close the A tag. After that, set the link text for the A tag as create new. Now save and run the application. And then press the create new button. Now, our create form is loaded successfully. Let's try to send an API request to worldtimeapi.org. This is the website gives the correct time of any city by passing the time zone and the city name. We are going to try to get the current time of the city. London. Let's click the create button. Oh nothing happens. Because we have not yet created the HTTP post create action in the home controller.cs file. So open the home controller.cs file. Then create an action method named details. This method will display the retrieved API results. From the API call to the details page. This method has a parameter of type API helper. Next we need to create the view file for this method. So right click on the details method name. Then press add view. After that select the razor view. Then select the template as details. After that, select the model class as API helper. Then press the add button. After that, wait for the scaffolding task to complete. Then open the details.cshtml. In here, delete the edit links. Because this is not the CRUD example. This is the API example. And there is no edit action in this. After that. Open. The home controller.cs file. Then create a method named as. API request by get. This method has a parameter of type string. With the name as. URL. In this method we are creating a. Request object of type. HTTP web request. API calls can be done by two ways. First method is to use the HTTP web request. And the second way is to use the HTTP client. First we will see how to make API calls using the HTTP web request. Then I will show you how to make API calls using the HTTP client. Then create a variable named HTML of type string. And set it to string.empty. After that let's open the try block and inside it set request.content length to zero. After that create a response variable of type HTTP web response and set it to request.get response. Please note that I have created this 
response variable inside a using block so that we don't need to dispose it explicitly next create a variable named stream of type stream and then set this variable to response.get response stream after that create a variable named reader of type stream reader and set this variable to new instance of stream reader by passing the received response stream as the constructor parameter then set the html variable to reader.read to end this will read the complete response string from the stream after that close the try block and open the catch block to catch the exception in case if any error occurs then return this HTML variable to the caller method okay that's it we are done with this method next add a method named create we already have a method named create but this method uses HTTP post verb and also it has a parameter of type API helper so there will not be any conflicts then inside this method add a variable named API result of type string then call the API request by get method by passing the API helper dot API address as the parameter and set the output of the method to the API result variable after that set the API helper dot API result to API result and now call the return to redirect to action method by passing the string details to the action name parameter and the API helper object to the first root values parameter okay let's run the application to check the output let's make our first API call to get the current time of London using the HTTP protocol yes it worked we are getting the complete response as the JSON string now I wanted to add the support for HTTPS protocol so open the home controller.cs file and in the method API request by get add a line to check for HTTPS in case if the protocol is detected as HTTPS then add the line service point manager dot security protocol to security protocol type dot tlsl2 then run the application now the application will support both HTTP and HTTPS protocols yes it is working fine for HTTPS protocol also then next we will see how to make the API calls using the HTTP client Stop the application and open the homecontroller.cs file and scroll down to the bottom of the file. Copy the API request by get method and paste it below. Then rename the method name to API request by HTTP client get after that delete the HTTP web request variable then delete all codes from the try block 
then inside the try block create a variable of type http client then set the request.base address to uri of the past url after that create a variable named response of type http response message and set it to request.getasync.result and then check the response dot is success status code if the success status code is true then we received the api response so create a variable named result of type string and set it to response.content.read as string async.result then set html to result and close the try block after that return the html to the calling method then go to the http post create action method and in here comment the api request by get methods api call and then set the api result to api request by http client get of api helper dot api address that's it let's build and run the application let's paste the api url in the api address text box and press the create button please note that this time we are making the api call by using the http client object perfect the application is working fine so in this application we saw how to make api calls in two different ways microsoft recommends to use the http client object because the http web request object has become obsolete now so we better use the http client object from now onwards to make any api calls with this i am completing this video before i sign off i request you to subscribe and share this video i would appreciate if you would like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified for all of the new videos that i will be posting thank you and bye for now